Hello and welcome to Eat Your Backyard, my YouTube channel. I hope you will subscribe. I hope you'll hit that like button and also leave a comment. Let me know what you think, ask a question, tell us something you know. Okay, so today we are going to start a project. I always wonder if I'm being a little nuts when I do these kinds of things, but we're going to start a project to utilize a lot of oak wood that resulted from a trimming, a major trimming of the oak in the front yard. By the way, Stay tuned for the video of that. I'm going to show the before and after. Giant, giant live oak tree. So the idea is to put these heavy oak branches as edges around the backyard. My idea is that that helps with the soil health. It provides a place for bugs to exist. I certainly know every log I turn over, I find worms under now. And by applying bunny manure everywhere, you provide them with the food. So I'm setting up a healthy soil environment, even despite the fact that I live on a Barrier Island, which is essentially a glorified sandbar. I think I'm something like 10 feet above seawater in my current zone 10A location right here, and I couldn't be happier. <laughs> I'll show you some first some before of the edges, and then we'll get right into trying to pick out some of these pieces and place some pieces along this edge and all throughout the backyard. Let's get right to it. Okay, we're gonna do a walk around and give you a perspective of what it looks like now. You can see this area needs reorganization, seriously, but we're looking at the edge itself. And right now it consists of four by fours in this area. It's a blend of all kind of th kinds of things, and doing this is actually going to make it one consistent thing, which is gonna be these oak branches. The bark will fall off eventually, but you'll still have the logs, and they'll last for many, many years since it's a very dense wood. Here are some of the logs. And uh, I can see in this pile, there's probably going to be a couple that are too big to move on my own. But the skinnier ones there, you see, are really perfect. And I'm looking for the angles. I'm looking for the lengths. Now, I can always bust out the sawzall and cut some of these pieces to fit. But I'm going to try to utilize those smaller pieces along this edge, kind of have a continuity of diameter of the pieces that I connect together as much as possible. Oh, I love that sound. Look at that strawberry tree in the beautiful, sunny Florida sky. Okay, so let's just follow this edge along. See more four by fours, janky concrete barrier. <laughs> and here we started to pile up some oak trees from an earlier, oak branches from an earlier trimming event. And I'll retain those, I'm sure, right where they're at. This is the compost bin. I placed one log here just to get a feeling, and you can see we start to draw the edges. In some places, I will, I will combine more than one branch together. All right, and along here, I have a collection of coquina rocks I've collected over the years, moving into a concrete edging. Oh, look at those, my two tamarind trees. Isn't that cool? I grew those from seeds place them right there, but I, I'm going to replace all of this concrete edging. That'll go really well in the bunny run, where you need stones around there to prevent them from digging holes too much. You see here, I just had some, some of the smaller branches piled up from an earlier trimming, but I would like to replace most of this with the large diameter pieces. This large piece they moved back here, the folks we have trimming the tree, and it's in a pretty good location, but you can get an example of how cool it can look. That piece could potentially go in there. All right, now for the rest of the yard, there is this concrete edging that I had installed years ago. We're going to, of course, retain that. I like that. That's was a good idea. And this little bed, which I made, our surfboard bed, is the shape of a surfboard. Because we surf. I'm not going to disturb that either. Okay, so let's get into it. Start picking out pieces. Okay, what do we have here? Pretty good piece. I wonder where that would go. Some of these I'm just going to rest over here to the side until I do decide where they go. So 
as long as they're running in a certain direction, we should be okay. Some of the pieces are a little bit rougher, like this. That one with the V in it, I may use back in the chicken pen or laying, a gun, laying up against a, a fence or something to add some structure. So that's a good one, but not for here. Move that over here to the side. We should have a good storage spot. Now this piece, heavy. Whew, that's a lot of weight. Wow, that one was heavy. That might have been right on the barrier of what I should have lifted. All right, this sure is a nice piece. Wow, look at that thing. Hmm. Put this one over here to the side. Already, the pile is beginning to thin. I was hoping this wouldn't be too much effort, honestly, because, it, like I said, this is right on the barrier of what I should be doing. Okay, continuing the process. I think this one I want to have along this area because it's such an impressive looking log. But in order to do that, I'll have to remove some of the stuff that's behind it. Just, you know, once these things start tumbling, you don't want the weight to go into you or a small tree next to it like this. So I want to be careful. This is a beautiful Fairchild mango. Interesting. I like these little stout pieces. Sometimes I think you could just lay those on the outside of one of the larger pieces and you make this curve. I'm going to try to do that wherever possible. Hmm. These odd pieces are quite interesting. Hmm. Now, big shout out to my wife, who definitely is super cool about projects like this. I think this could stress other people out since it is a very eclectic way of gardening. But part of that deal is for me to get it all in place so that it doesn't sit here for a long time. Which is why I'm doing this today. Get right on it before the afternoon storms come in which are sure to arrive here in sunny central Florida in June towards the second half of the day. In fact, I looked on the weather and it's going to be a wet one. That's good. 
We're gonna get a pulse of heavy, heavy rain again. We've had some decent rains over the last week or so due to a tropical storm and some afternoon storms. But it looks like we're gonna have a bit of a dry period for the next week or so, so we want as much of that water as we can get. I've actually got some water and catchment situations that I'll spread out once it starts getting dry again, because it'll get very dry. And also to be here with the hose at the late evening, watering, making sure that the really dry places get some water or else you fry your plants in an environment like this. I'll tell you, this kind of stuff makes it fun. Oh, we've got a plane going over. Is it towing a rope? It's towing a rope and it's selling booze. Hmm. All right. That is a heavy, heavy, heavy one. That is really on the edge of what I should be lifting. I'm gonna try it. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, as long as I go straight up like that, I'm all right. Okay. Woo. Not bad, McFlaherty. Oh, that's a good one. Tuning fork. It's a gigantic tuning fork. This one's going to be great for leaning up against a fence, which is what I'm going to do with it. Just going to lean it up against a cherry tree for now, though. Get to that one later. Oh, look at this. There's one right here that is almost perfectly fit into place already. I wonder if that, I wonder if dreams do come true. All right, so what I was saying is one of these, one of the benefits of doing this is that you do create a cool place for the kids to play around. It creates a lot more structure to climb on the logs, to look around the logs, to find little crit critters. I know my son loves that, along with his friends who come over to play here quite often. And I think you really wanna be that place where the kids wanna come play. That's kind of interesting, and it's got a turn at the end there, and I like to leave the natural little nubs and so on. Yeah, I'm excited about that one. This one is definitely not gonna be a winner for this location, I don't think, but I'll put it there for now. Look at the post value of this one. That one is so straight and gnarly. I'm gonna keep it and use it as a post. So some of the ones I'm sorting out and piling over on the side here for other uses. Now, can you imagine letting all this wood go to waste? I don't know, it took a long time to grow it and I think it has a lot of value. It's the, one of the most dense woods you can imagine. Certainly great firewood. Smoke on oak, oak or coke. It's no joke. That's no joke. It's probably about a 70 pounder. And I think that will work right there. So here we go. Uh-oh, do we have bugs? No. Some of these I can just drag. Dragging is as good a method as any. The grass will grow back. 
My back is slower to grow back. Just keep rolling it around until I find where it kind of lays flat. Placing these things around to get a feel for it. There are going to be a lot more to be done here, but already I like the look of that. Really nice. Now it seems to me that this piece right here wants to be right there. Either that or it wants to replace what's here. I think what I'm gonna do is actually see if I can run it just right along here. This one's a dragger as well. <laughs> oh man, that is super, super heavy. Okay. Yeah, that's kinda of cool. itself does like a spiral. So you can see I've got the coquina rock inside of here. I've got some pieces that I just temporarily placed there. And then I've got this piece, which I think is going to be a winner. I love the fact that it comes up like this. You can see that it does a spiral. Interesting. If you've ever seen my how to not nub your oak tree video cuttings I've done, I've done years ago, heal up like this and create perfect cuts a lot of the time. This thing was trimmed many times. Not sure exactly where on the tree it came from, but what I'm going to do is likely remove these rocks and come up with some new scenario for them. And put this one back up against that. It'll just generally come around this way, but it'll redefine this edge and I'll bring a rather large log set of logs to go along this edge here. And I might even extend it out. So just cooling off in the shade. Let's talk about it. Why do I do things like this? Put you know, these kind of ideas into practice. And the reason is I do believe it's all interconnected. And I think the more we get out of the way of the system that is nature, the better. In nature, wood lies on the ground. Right? And it rots and it decays and bugs make homes in it and eat around it. So it makes your, your ecosystem of your backyard for me much more natural. This is a way that I can do it back here. This would not be for everybody, probably unless you had this kind of, you know, artsy backyard type of setup like I'm establishing here. Of course, you know, it's like that in the backyard, but in the front yard, I don't have anything really like this. There is one bed on the side that's kind of in a corner back behind that I am going to edge as well with the oak. But, uh, you know, I'm kind of careful where I use it. However, uh, I'll tell you this much. When Jack and friends go to find worms, they find them under the logs and they feed them to the chickens quite often. It creates a place where worms can live and I think that's really important to have worms in your yard, certainly. And the way to do it is simply to provide them food, water, shelter. Food, water, shelter, that's what worms need. They can't have none of, any, of, of them. Uh, they can't have any one of those be out of order and be functioning properly. Once you get worms that have those things consistently, then you are gonna get a much richer soil situation because they're gonna be putting their worm castings into the ground, which contributes to a bacteria growth. It feeds everything in the soil. It creates holes that burrow down where water can go down to the roots of plants and on and on and on and on. I can't possibly understand the complexity of nature. Neither can you, but you do know it works. I mean, look around. It works. So the more you can get out of the way and not provide it with something that's out of its normal conditions, the better. I don't use, this is not uh, Verma virtue signaling or anything, but uh, I, I'm now at the point where I don't use any artificial pesticides or herbicides or anything in the backyard. Still, I'm using some granular fertilizer here and there, but I make sure I water it in real well and just the organic fertilizer, just the regular for fertilizer, granular fertilizer. You have to be careful that they haven't put in some kind of herbicide in there or whatever. And the reason is I'm feeding all of this stuff to my bunnies, to my chickens. 
I mean, they eat the grass, they eat the leaves off of the edible trees I have, like mulberry and more, all the time. And uh, we eat the eggs, we put the bunny manure back in, so it's all part of a, a loop here, and I'm not gonna be adding anything, you know, uh, that has the word side on the end of it into this environment. And uh, that is working out pretty darn well. If you look around, it's pretty lush and green. Now it's more green than normal because we just had a heavy rain, period. Okay, so if you stayed this long, I know you're a true believer. And I just wanna say thank you from the depth of my heart for watching, for being part of the Eat Your Backyard community discussion. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe and give a thumbs up. Also, go check out my music channel, Jedi Jingle Maker, which is all one word, Jedi Jingle Maker, like the Star Wars term Jedi. And you can see my original music. I love it. That's one of my favorite things to do on YouTube, on the internet, is create music videos. And I hope you'll go check it out. Subscribe to that channel as well, Jedi Jingle Maker. Thanks for watching. Eat your backyard. Get growing. Get something in the ground. Plant a lot of stuff. See what happens. Cloud cat towers, the gorgeous palaces, the great globe itself, I all which it inherits shall dissolve, and like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. That fact that everything is in decay is your helper. That is allowing you that you don't have to let go because there's nothing to hold on to. <laughs> it's achieved for you, in other words, by the process of nature. So once you see that uh, you just don't have a prayer and it's all washed up and that you will vanish and leave not a rack behind and you really get with that, suddenly you find you have the power, this enormous access of energy. But it's not power that came to you because you grabbed it, it came in entirely the opposite way power that comes to you in that opposite way is power with which you can be trusted.